What's going on everybody? I'm Brandon Rust from Full Crop Science and today we're going to be talking about LED lights. I'm going to give you all of the basic fundamentals to understand light and how much light to give your plants. So over the next few minutes, you'll have a complete science-backed framework for running LEDs. We'll go over how spectrum shapes plant morphology and resin production, what PPFD and DLI actually mean and how to use them, the best light ranges for seedlings, veg, transition, and flower, how many hours on and off for each phase of growth, how to ramp intensity up and down without shocking your crops, and how to build simple sunrise sunset schedules that plants love. By the end of this podcast, you'll have a light building blueprint that you can plug directly into your grow. You often hear growers talk about watts, fixture height, and whether or not it looks bright. But the plants don't care about watts or what your eyeballs think. Plants care about how many photons hit the canopy per second. That's PPFD. How many photons they get per day. That's DLI. And what color those photons are. That is spectrum. If you can understand these things, LED can become a powerful tool for spectrum tuning. So let's define all of the metrics. First, we'll talk about PPFD photosynthetic flux density. It's measured in micromoles per square meter per second. And it tells you how many useful photons are landing on a square meter of canopy. You can think of PPFD as the instantaneous light intensity, similar to water pressure coming out of a hose. Then we have DLI, daily lighting integral. DLI is the total number of photons that hit that square meter over the entire day. This is measured in moles per square meter per day. So if PPFD is the water pressure, DLI is how much water ended up in the bucket by the end of the day. For high intensity crops like cannabis, we typically aim for low 30s to around 40 moles per meter squared per day at peak flower in well-tuned rooms. Below that, and you're probably leaving yield on the table, and above that without proper CO2 implementation, a dialed environment, and a perfect nutrition program, you're probably paying for stress. So every time you're looking at a dimmer, don't ask what percentage, ask what PPFD am I hitting at the canopy, and what DLI does that give me with my current hours of light. We also wanna look at spectrum or the color of those photons. LED lets us sculpt spectrum in a way that HPS never could. But as soon as you give people choices, there can be mistakes. So I'll keep it simple and I'll bring it down to the four main bands of light. Blue, green, red, far red, and I'll also touch a little bit on UV. Blue light is the light which is measured between 400 and 500 nanometers. It is like the plant's personal trainer. It tightens up inner nodes, it shortens stems, and it helps build strong, compact plants. Blue light also improves stomatal function and, inc and can increase photosynthetic efficiency per unit of area of leaf surface. But too much blue light can decrease biomass and hurt overall fixture efficiency. It's great for shaping plants, but not great for biomass production if you overload it. Oftentimes gets a bad rap, but it shouldn't. It penetrates deeper into the canopy further than blue or red. It helps feed lower leaves and shaded tissue, and it makes the plant look natural to your eyes, which is important when you're looking at plants to diagnose issues. Most full spectrum white LEDs already have a good chunk of green, so you don't need to chase it. It's important to remember that because plants do photosynthesize green light, you should not use bright green lights during dark time to work in the garden. Now red light, which is light between 600 and 700 nanometers, is your workhorse. It's extremely efficient for photosynthesis and it's strongly tied to biomass production, flower, and yield. Paired with reasonable amounts of blue, it gives you fast growth without plants that stretch and are structurally weak. In flower, red-rich spectrums plus enough blue to control morphology is the winning combination. Far red, which is between 700 and 750 nanometers, is where things get interesting. It doesn't count as photosynthetic active radiation in the classic 400 to 700 nanometer sense, but it does have an effect on the phytochrome system, the internal light sensor plant uses to tell day from shade and night, and it helps plants adjust 
its morphology. Extra far red can trigger shade avoidance responses, longer internodes, bigger leaves, and more stretch. It can also interact with flowering response in short day plants by making the plant feel like night comes sooner when used at the end of the day. So moderate controlled far red can be a tool but blasting far red for 12 hours straight would be a recipe for loose airy and altered secondary metabolite profiles. Now, UV. Mostly UVA, but a little bit of UBV isn't going to have so much impact on plant morphology or photosynthesis. It's more about chemistry. So UVA, which is around 315 to 400 nanometers, is gentler and can be run for longer, contributing to color and resin expression. UBV, UVB, which is below 315 nanometers, is more aggressive, so short controlled doses can drive up stress metabolites like cannabinoids and flavonoids, but if you push it too far, you can cause stress and damage to your plants. So, well, it's not super necessary. You can use UV in late veg and late flowering in short pulses to help increase some of the metabolite profiles. However, it's really important to watch your plants and do, a do, and do your due diligence for understanding how much UV you can use. Now that we have all of our bases covered, let's turn all of that into a practical recipe. So for seedlings and clones, your goal is a gentle photosynthesis to promote strong root formation. You want zero light burn and you want a cool neutral white spectrum, usually in the four to 5,000 Kelvin range. You want decent blue to keep them compact and you want moderate red so they still photosynthesize well. There's no real need at this point for UV or far red intensity. You want between 100 to 250 U moles at the canopy depending on how hardened off your seeds or clones are. The spectrum that we typically want to be in is between 3500 and 5000 Kelvin, which is a full spectrum. We want blue between 15 and 25% during the veg with strong red content from the white plus a bit of 660 nanometer at this point you don't really need far red but you can use it in short end of the day pulses if you're looking to increase the stretch and change the morphology of plants you can think of the veg spectrum as kind of a neutral daylight with a subtle red push transition or stretch which is the first two or three weeks after flipping from vegetative phase into flowering is kind of the danger zone where people either drop ppfd too low and lose potential or they spike ppfd plus red and far red and stretch the plants into the light so at 3500 to a 4000 kelvin you want to keep some blue in there, but you may start decreasing it while maintaining a red rich base at moderate intensity. And again, you can use that far red at the end of the day to trigger shade response, which may have an impact on plant morphology and flowering time. For flowering and ripening, you generally want between 3000 and 3500 Kelvin with a white base. You want strong red with blue to be around 10 to 15% just enough blue to keep leaves healthy and prevent overshoot and stretch. You can also add UVA or short UVB pulses to push, to push resin and terpene production mid to late flower. You do not want continuous far red, especially if you care about tight dense buds. In late flower, some growers like to slightly increase blue or UVA and drop overall intensity because this can help prevent foxtailing and preserve terpenes and color while the plant finishes. Now that we have a base fundamental understanding of what should be given when, let's talk about some of the numbers. I'll assume that no supplemental CO2 is being used, but if you are running between 800 and 1200 ppm of CO2 and have a tuned environment and nutrition, you can push light intensity a little bit higher. So for seedlings and clones, you want between 16 and 18 hours of light on at a PPFD around one to 250. And that'll give you a DLI roughly between six to 16. You wanna start on the lower end and as the plants harden off and as the roots grab, you can creep those levels up. For vegetative, it's similar light time to seeds and clones between 16 to 18 hours on 
but for early veg, you can run approximately 250 to 400 PPFD, and typically between 400 to 600 PPFD pre-flower. This will put your DLI in the mid-teens up to the 30s. For the flowering phase, you typically want to run 12 and 12. However, some longer flowering or equatorial varieties do better with more dark time. You want to start flowering around 500 umoles at the canopy, and over the first couple of weeks, you can ramp that up to six or 700 umoles. At this particular time, your DLI should be in the low 20s to around 30. Mid flower, you're still going to have the same flowering time, but you can slowly increase the PPFD from around 600 to 800 umoles. Typically, you won't need to go over this intensity, which will bring your DLI to around 30 to 35. If your environment, your feeding, and your CO2 are all dialed in, you can run higher PPFDs, but you should never jump from a lower PPFD to a high PPFD. You should always make sure to ramp. And this brings us up to the ripening stage and the finishing phase. At this point, we're looking to decrease the temperature at the canopy, which means dialing back the light intensity and bringing down the DLI. A good target is between four to 600 PPFD and a total DLI, which brings your total DLI into the mid 20s. This can help preserve the volatile terpenes and flavonoids. If you want a complete breakdown of all of the different PPFDs and DLIs week for week, comment below and I can send you our free guide so that way you guys can understand everything that you need to know about light and light intensity.